So our next guest wrote an article about how weird DeFi is. Joining us now is Coinus senior business reporter, Brady Dale. Welcome to the show, Brady. Hey, how's it going? So Brady, you wrote an article about uh, how weird DeFi is getting. Uh, give us a, a little summary of what you found here. Sure. I mean, I think it, it really, the weirdness, I mean, it's a little tongue in cheek. You know, last year I wrote a story about weird De DeFi when the story was the food memes. And that was honestly weird. You know, you had uh, the spaghetti meme, the yam, you know, yam finance, all that stuff. That was, that was very strange. It was, it was kind of a game that folks were playing. In fact, a lot of those were actually really financial games. Uh, but this new era, I think, reflects the fact that the market is, is maturing in a way that we saw the internet do, where it's starting to make things that you can only make with this technology. And, and that was a part of the story that ultimately got the internet to a place where, you know, it generates more money than anything else ever did. So, you know, just one example from the ones that I wrote about is this uh, protocol called Convex. And all Convex does is it sits atop Curve, which is uh, one of the popular automated market makers. It's one that specializes in stable coins, though I can do more than that now, but it, that's, that's what it's known for. And uh, Curve is also a really great place to, to mine new valuable tokens, their CRV tokens. And so Convex, it just makes, it's, it's, their yield farming on Curve is hard and Convex makes it a lot easier. So that's all it does. It doesn't offer an additional financial instrument. It doesn't do lending. It doesn't offer a derivative. You know, it's just making it easier for you to put money into Curve and earn more CRV token. Uh, so I think that's a good example of sort of the composability in DeFi and a way in which uh, the whole sector is actually getting more advanced. So, Brady, I know uh, uh, this whole iron and titanium thing is is maybe not uh, entirely uh, your bag here, but just did it fit in that sort of category? Um, or not was really? I don't think iron finance is a part of the mainstream DeFi story. I mean, I checked around with some folks about that yesterday. The kind of grown-ups in DeFi weren't paying attention to it. You know, this was something that was, I mean, if you're making, I don't know, like the unbelievable gains there just obviously isn't going to work out over time. That was not a, it, it didn't, it really wasn't a serious project as far as I can tell, at least not at this stage. I mean, sometimes things can start off, you know, really loose and sort of themselves out and become more significant later. But, but that was something to just sort of attract people who just look for big numbers and get excited. You know, do, I mean, the fact that this is the first thing Mark Cuban showed up at, I mean, that's sort of what happens is rich people are dumb money a lot of times. And I think he was an example of that. Yeah. Do you think that ha having him involved and losing that much uh, in many ways may have hurt potential investment in DeFi uh, in general, no. just because like, it, you know, no. Okay. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a side chain <laughs> small project that um, really isn't relevant to the larger DeFi story. No, I, I don't. I don't even really think it is much of a story beyond the fact that Mark Cuban got involved. And yeah, there was a there was a bunch of loss in a short term way, but we've seen a bunch of similar losses that have happened. You know, this is a new rocky world. Um, it's money on the internet. Crazy things are going to happen. But no, I don't think in the grand scheme of things we're going to see iron finance is important. Brady, let's just step back for a second and talk about the DeFi weirdness question that we kind of, you know, mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. So DeFi has always been sort of weird, at least like, you know, for the average mainstream user, right? It's like totally confusing mm -hmm. to a lot of people. They don't understand what it is or how it works. And it seems like in some ways it's getting a little bit weirder and more niche in, in certain areas. And like, is this a problem um, in the sense that, you know, you, you at the same time you kind of have exchanges and you have, you know, various institutions trying to make DeFi more accessible to the average user. But if people can't really understand it, um, is there a risk? here for for kind of for buyers i mean do you understand how your email works you know i mean i guess that's Sorry, the thing folks folks get to folks start using things and eventually it doesn't matter whether they understand it or not you know the hardest thing to understand about DeFi, but i think people will get more acclimated to this over time and they'll also they won't need to be as acclimated to it either it's just it's the composability question right it's that people can it's that entrepreneurs can permissionlessly plug into each other's protocol so for example convex the example i gave earlier this protocol that helps you earn more money investing in curve um didn't need to ask curves permission to do this they just built the thing you know and uh and they were able to have people send their curve tokens to them and, and it all just works right it's just a, it's just a different way of doing business and as time goes on, just like the internet, you know, more and more abstractions will be built on top of it. 
uh, that that make it work well for people who you know don't want to look under the hood. Um, you know that's that's the story we saw in the '90s and the early 2000s. That'll happen again in DeFi. But the truth is, you know, people are making a ton of money. Uh, these things haven't blown up. Like the the big significant ones haven't blown up. You know, Compound hasn't blown up. Uniswap hasn't blown up. Um, they're adding more users every day. It's it's hard to imagine a world in which this doesn't just get bigger and bigger. So Brady. Uh uh, along those lines, we, we uh, I, I got a chance to listen to some, at least some of what you were doing last night on uh, Twitter Spaces on Solana. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you look at this space in general, what projects and what, what platforms do you think out there are just really underappreciated? Underappreciated. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, on the Solana topic, I think that Solana is worth watching uh, because it's just there's a I think there's a growing consensus in crypto uh, that something important is going to happen there. You know, it's a, it's a good set of technologists. It works really fast. People are eager to do stuff there. Um, beyond that, you know, I guess the other thing that I do think is underappreciated in the DeFi world, and I think people would say this is pretty weird is, you know, the story of the last few months has obviously been non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Um, and we've already got some DeFi projects out there that are looking, as using, looking at using NFTs as collateral. So a way uh, that you can, you know, put an NFT in and borrow money against it. And that's, so you've got, uh, you've got native collateral on the internet, you've got native property on the internet, and then you're doing internet native lending. Um, I think that is probably going to end up being surprisingly powerful, particularly as NFTs start to do a lot more things besides just logging artworks and collectibles, you know, and I think, I think we'll see more of that all the time. 